Thanks as always, Mike. Uh, so first of all, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we have our uh, annual Thanksgiving party tonight. So it's a big deal for my wife to uh, make sure we get together uh, Tuesday night before Thanksgiving as a football family. So everybody in the organization, all of our wives, all of our kids, all of our players, um, it'll, it'll be a big deal tonight. Uh, so we get to celebrate, honor the seniors. Uh, they'll all get a uh, huge framed jersey uh, with a couple of pictures uh, honoring them. Uh, so that'll be a big deal tonight, obviously, uh, honor Brandon Adams uh, while we're at the, at the event as well. Um, but again, happy Thanksgiving to, to all of you guys. Uh, a lot of you guys saw out of practice that Coach Bill Curry was here today. Uh, meant a lot to me, meant a lot to this program for him to be back around. Uh, he was in meetings and uh, came out to practice. So obviously was a legendary player here, a uh, legendary player in the NFL, then was a great coach uh, here, obviously, and then went on uh, to, to have a really good head coaching career, some other spots. Uh, but but his heart is here with us uh, at Georgia Tech. So anytime we can recognize and bring back legends of the flats to our program for our guys to see them and to meet them and uh, for him to see firsthand uh, what our culture is all about, get to be around our guys that are some of the most amazing uh, young men in college football, uh, always take the time to do that. So it was good for him to be back around. Uh, it's uh, four days, I guess, now if my math is right from when we last played. Uh, so really good win uh, by our football team. Uh, we asked them on a short week uh, to start fast, strike first. Uh, they did that, came right out of the gate, big pass to Malachi and got things going. Uh, finished the first half with a caused fumble, recovered fumble by Jaitlin Askew, um, and, then a, and then a touchdown to send us uh, into halftime up 21-3. to uh, the, the third part of what we talked about all week with them is we needed to finish and finish at a high level. And I'm really proud of the guys the way they did that. Uh, they trust the process. We were on a short week, so they prepared at a high level, got ready to play uh, with some unique schemes offensively and defensively, some new guys playing for us in the rotation that hadn't had to play much this season. They came out and played admirably. And, uh, you know, I think the, uh, what we did between the third and fourth quarter uh, to give us a chance to finish. Uh, Leah Thomas, our nutritionist, had a Skittles fest. I don't know if anybody saw that, uh, to get the guys to, to finish strong, uh, to make sure their glycogen levels or whatever big word she uses uh, so that they could finish strong. And the guys did that, and uh, that, was a, that was a neat moment. Uh, obviously, this Saturday uh, is senior day, and uh, it's not lost on me how much these guys mean. Uh, to this program, to the foundation that's being set in this culture, and uh, just to see them. Uh, I'm trying to, to enjoy as much of the time as possible with them and uh, cherish every single minute that I get to coach them here in this building and just know that and understand that with this degree that they're going to get in this experience they're getting uh, from Georgia Tech, they're going to go out and be amazing uh, young men. So I just want to mention them real quick. Uh, Brad Morgan and Scott Morgan, uh, obviously Brad's career ended, so he didn't get to play for us this year, um, but has been just an invaluable member of our program all season long, helping out with the offensive line. Obviously his brother Scott, uh, Amari Jarrett. Um, so one of our traditions that we have is best Fridays in football at the very end of the kick script. Uh, the very last play we practice is victory, and then OJ and I embrace on Fridays and you know just like it's game day. And, uh, you know, Thursday night after the win, the very first thing was uh, me and OJ hugging, um, you know, at the end. And we've already passed that down to somebody else that I'll keep between us, uh, that tradition moving forward. Uh, Brentavius Glanton played defensive line for us and uh, has battled a lot of nagging injuries, but just keeps willing himself to come back and contribute. Um, Christian Campbell. Uh, has played nickel for us, has played safety for us, has done a lot of things, has had a huge special teams role uh, as a starter on punt team uh, and amongst other things, and really proud of his development, had a huge play uh, to basically seal the game for us on Thursday night. And that's just a culmination of all the effort that he's put in uh, throughout the course of this year, buying into our culture. Um, Tyler Cooksey, uh, can't say enough about him and his impact on special teams. But what he means for the foundation of this program, just his energy level, his buy-in, his unselfishness, 
every single day uh, when he comes into the program. Uh, he's worn the jersey number 90 twice this year, uh, which is a huge honor. Uh, being a great teammate is the highest honor you can have in our culture, and Tyler uh, will always be remembered that way. Uh, Nathan Cottrell uh, hit over 20 miles an hour eight times in a college football game. That is hard to do. He hit 22.08 miles an hour in a college football game, which is the fastest that we've had in three years uh, using the catapult system. So just proud of him. Understanding that his offense role is in, his, in as large as maybe he would even like, but his unselfish nature and being one of the elite gunners uh, in college football and kickoff and on punt uh, has been special. Uh, Jared Southers, Tyler Davis, uh, the way that they've come into this program as grad transfers and just embodied everything that we believe in and uh, passed that on and educated the young guys how to be at an elite program and how to take care of your, your bodies, handle your business, prepare to play at a high level on Saturdays. Uh, ju just really proud of them. And then obviously, um, you know, Brandon Adams, uh, we'll honor him on Saturday. Uh, just like we do every single day um, in our program. And uh, one of the cool things about this weekend is uh, the athletic department ha ha uh, had a Brandon Adams clothing drive that all the student athletes across all the sports got involved in and were engaged in. Um, Saturday morning, uh, we had recruits in. Obviously, I can't talk about that. But I came here, me and my daughter came in here early in the morning on Saturday. And there were already a bunch of our guys in the building on one of their few Saturdays off, getting ready and getting prepared uh, to take the clothes and donate the clothes. And that's special. That doesn't happen at a lot of places, but it happens here. And uh, I just thought that was a special moment. And, uh, you know, just really proud of the guys. So um, with that, questions? Please raise your hand. Obviously, a pretty major challenge this week in terms of the opponent. Kind of what do you see from Georgia when you look at them on film sure. and obviously a top kind of 5, 10 team in the country? Yeah. Uh, I, I, obviously, the first thing that jumps off your mind is, or jumps off the tape is, uh, you know, really, really, really good players. Um, they've got a strong roster, uh, size, speed, length, athleticism. Uh, the coaching staff has them playing really hard. They're sound fundamentally, um, big, physical, tough. And, uh, you know, obviously they've got elite playmakers on both sides of the ball. Um, so the recruiting piece, um, obviously they've done, they've done that at a high level. And uh, then they get them in there and, you know, develop the guys. So um, it's a big challenge, but, you know, every, the same as every week, you know, we've got to focus on us and, uh, you know, just get ourselves in the right mindset, framework, game plan wise to be ready to play at a high level against a really, really good team. I'm uh, remembering your, your introductory uh, news conference when you uh, said, jokingly, I guess, that this will be the last time you write anything in red. Um, so you, you, <laughs> you come in, obviously, uh, uh, in tune to this rivalry. Sure. Going back to your days in Conyers, your, your first time here, do you, what's, your, what's your memories of this rivalry? What, and what does it mean to you personally? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I'm a product of Georgia football, Georgia high school football. Um, you know, born and raised to love uh, this rivalry. I still remember sitting up in the, the stands over there on Thanksgiving morning uh, watching the old Georgia Tech, Georgia JV football games, um, watching them, cheering on, and then we'd go have Thanksgiving dinner out at my grandma's house in Conyers, and then we'd go out in the backyard and have the turkey bowl. Uh, I think I still have the trophy little wooden block with a wishbone uh, sitting on there for the MVP of the Turkey Bowl, um, 13 years old, special, special memories. Uh, but, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great game, great rivalry. Um, and the thing that, that you know, I've uh, talked a lot about is getting this game um, back on the national stage that it deserves to be. Um, you look at just the, the high school coaching and the high school talent uh, that's in the state of Georgia um, is really second to none. Uh, we did a study, uh, Patrick Suttis, our general manager, did a study, the number of Power Five uh, players that go on and sign scholarships from the different states. Georgia has the fourth most 
Power Five players uh, in America go on to play Power Five Division One scholarship football. But if you put that relative to the number of Power Five programs in the state, Georgia is actually number one because there's two Power Five programs in the state, us and Georgia, and uh, the level of talent, the level of coaching, uh, the commitment to uh, playing football at a high level, loving football, football being a priority, uh, you know, sets this, th this game up, uh, sets these programs up uh, to be the elite uh, in college football. So um, obviously recruiting matters, and uh, you know, we're gonna make that a priority. We've made it a priority and we'll continue to do so, um, that we wanna make sure we're building uh, the program the right way and to have such a, a backyard of elite high school players and elite high school coaching and development uh, really means a lot to us. Jeff, you've been around this game in different capacities at Georgia Tech. Is it any different for you now as a head coach? Uh, I mean, I guess it will be on Saturday, but just the day-to-day. -day, um, I try to stay very focused on just the day-to-day -day mechanics of what we do and going through our process. I got to imagine that gets boring to hear, but it's facts. It's what we do. Um, we have a routine. We stick to our routine. We try to make sure it's better and better and better every single day and every single week. Uh, I think our guys have bought into that philosophy. Uh, they understand what a Tuesday practice is going to look like, how we're going to attack it what we're going to do game plan wise, film study wise, and uh, the accumulation of that throughout a season leads to more and more guys playing at a high level. Then you compound that over a career when the guys get these habits ingrained in them, it sets them up for such huge success moving forward because they understand it, they can apply it and just play at a high level, prepare at a high level, um, get themselves ready uh, to perform their best, you know, on college football Saturdays. Tour. Going back to kind of what you're talking about with the senior class, you know, obviously the season as a whole probably wasn't what they really wanted coming into their last year, but what sense do you get from them that they are content with kind of what they have done in this year of transition and laying the foundation for what you want to sure. build? I think uh, Andy Demetra, I don't know if Andy's in here. I thought Andy wrote a, a great article about Tyler Davis, um, who was voted one of our permanent captains. Um, and just what this experience has meant to him. Uh, you talk to Jared Southers the same way, Nathan Cottrell, um, Tyler Cook. So you just ask those guys uh, the meaningful experiences, the meaningful relationships that were developed. They understand what they're setting up for this program to be. And, uh, you know, I, I think they take a lot of pride in that. Uh, there's so many young guys playing. Um, and playing at a really high level, but they're freshmen and sophomores. The ACC D lineman of the week is a redshirt freshman, Jordan Dominic. The rookie of the week on offense was uh, James Graham. He's a redshirt freshman. Uh, I think 98% of our passing yards, 94% uh, percent of our rushing yards are either freshmen or sophomores. We have probably, and Mike's got it here, he does a great job other than introducing me. Uh, <laughs> 92% of the tackles are returning, 92% of the tackles for loss are returning, 94% of the sacks, 100% of the turnovers are returning. So they understand that with a small senior class, their impact um, has been to lay the foundation for the future success of this program. And we honor them every single day. We talk about their contributions, which are great. And, uh, you know, they will be greatly missed. Um, but the lessons that we've learned together and the way they've bought into everything that we do and uh, continued every single week to get better as an organization, um, it's palpable. You can see it. And uh, just really proud of them and uh, know that they're going to leave this place uh, feeling really good about their experience. Kelly? It's been 20 years since uh, Georgia Tech's won in the rivalry game here. You were on that staff, obviously. What are your kind of recollections of that That game is overtime game? And yeah, I mean, I, I remember being here with Coach O'Leary, and uh, it was the last game of the season, and it had implications um, every single year that I was here with him. Um, you know, he had built it um, and built a really good team, a uh, really good roster. I was lucky to coach under him and learn uh, how to be a coach by uh, the relentless nature that he had every single day to get better and to improve, uncover every little advantage you can possibly get. Um, but the, the, the last game here, uh, that game um, in the stadium, it was 48-48. 
30 seconds left. It's third down. George Gotzi's the holder. Uh, we decide to kick the field goal on third down. And as a young GA, I'm sitting there saying, what are we doing? Why are we kicking on third down with 30 seconds left? And Georgia blocks it, gets tipped back into George Godsey's hands. George Godsey actually has the presence of mind to center the ball. And then we get a fourth down kick with no time left uh, to win the game. And as a young coach, I, I watched that. And uh, just the presence of mind by Coach O'Leary uh, and just the, the coaching and the way that we attacked and uh, all of those things were really, really special. Uh, and, you know, so that was, a, that was a really, really good memory um, being there. I didn't, know it, I didn't know that part of it. That was the last time. Coach, going back to last Thursday um, against NC State, second half, uh, offensive possessions. The first one was very effective, and the last one was very, very effective. In between, a little bit of a lag. Uh, could you speak to that just a little bit? Yeah, so, and, and this is a thing that I've talked to, talked to the guys about, and we've had this conversation over and over and over. Um, there's been a tendency – uh, in this program to when you have some modem of success to relax a little bit and we are constantly trying to fight that urge constantly showing examples that we cannot do that in this program uh, you go back to the Virginia game uh, we're going up at halftime with 30 seconds left we take the lead you know in a hostile environment and we relax you cannot relax in big time college football. And we spend an inordinate amount of time making sure we point out those things to our guys and try to educate them that regardless of what kind of success that you have, you still have to apply pressure and you still have to perform uh, at a high level. And that, I mean, that's the challenge. I mean, just take an example of Jordan Dominic and James Graham. They get recognized by the ACC and rightfully so um, as player of the week. How are they going to handle that? And we spend a lot of time educating them. Uh, here's how you have to handle success. Here's how you have to handle setbacks and apply it in the same framework, mindset, so that every day all you're focused on is just getting better. Don't worry about the results. Just focus on the task at hand and constantly try to improve and constantly try uh, to perform your best at all times, regardless of what people say about you, positively or negatively, what the result was, positively or negatively. You just got to put the ball down and play and compete and do your very best at all times, regardless of any outside circumstances. And that's the constant challenge that we're trying to get to with this program being the first year. Um, just the learning experiences and the examples uh, are, are important to have. And uh, we've had plenty, and the guys are learning uh, how that matters. Um, on Saturday, even though Texas A&M wasn't able to overcome their own downfalls against Georgia, there were moments where they really challenged them. Sure. What are some things you took away from that tape from A&M and maybe some things that you can utilize on when you play Georgia? Yeah, I mean, I thought they, uh, they had a good plan. Uh, you know, they've got a, a very talented roster. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good football game uh, against two really good teams. So we're always looking at uh, what other teams are doing schematically and relative um, to similar body types and similar schemes that we have and see what things we can apply. So we do that throughout the year. We go back and watch every single uh, play of every single game. Uh, to find different things that we might can implement uh, within our package to help our players uh, play at a high level. Uh, so interesting things. So part of my process is one of the first things I do on Sundays uh, after we put the film to bed is I watch the explosive runs and the explosive pass tape for the opposing defense. <laughs> and uh, I had to call the GAs in uh, when I watched the explosive runs against Georgia's defense, and I'm like – Where's the rest of them? There's only eight. Aren't there supposed to be? No, coach, that's that's accurate. There's there's eight. So uh, credit to credit to their players and their coaches. Uh, they play really really good run defense, and uh, so just that, that's part of our process. Have you mentioned earlier about you know wanting to put this game on a, on a national stage, and you've spoken often about being a lead, and obviously part of getting it on that stage is, is you know making it a competitive rivalry. And I'm curious, just in your perspective, what would constitute success as far as over the long term of, of how you guys compete with, with Georgia? 
Yeah, I mean, we just got to get better in every single phase of our program. Obviously, we're a developmental program, so, um, you know, uh, I think relative to the, the numbers and the size, what – what Coach Lou Corrala has done since January in this program, getting our guys bigger and faster and stronger. We still need to continue that piece. Um, you know, the next phase uh, that we're about to hit come Sunday uh, is the recruiting piece. And obviously that is a huge priority for us, um, recruiting at a high level. Um, but and I think I've said it before here. I actually told it to the team this morning that we are not just collecting talent. We are building a program, so making sure we get the right guys in here that have the right mindset, the right mental makeup, the right desire to develop, along with having the size and the strength and the, the length prerequisites that we you know, are looking for. The mental piece, the, the character piece, the academic piece has to be strong as well uh, to be able to develop and develop at a high level. So we spend a lot of time on that. And so we will continue to do that. And then also uh, finding ways to develop our program internally uh, while we bring you know, the new guys um, in and bring them into the culture. And then the culture will take care of those guys and tell them, explain to them, this is how this thing works. Here's how you become a big time player in this program um, going through this process. So uh, interestingly, last year, this senior class, so in the course of a program, the reason seniors are usually the leaders is because they know exactly what the expectations that they've learned over time within a system, within a culture. Well, these eight seniors, they were learning it in real time with the rest of the guys without any prior knowledge of here's the expectations, here's the culture, here's the standards. So they're having to learn it and teach it at the same time. And I think that might be one of my favorite parts about them is how invested they were uh, and are into us and getting to know us and getting to know the expectations so that they could translate it and enforce it uh, with the rest of the guys. But it's a, it's a developmental piece. It's a recruiting piece. Um, all of those things coincide and you continue to build um, throughout the lifespan, you know, of the guy's career while they're here. Following that up, um, I can't remember what you said when you first took over the program, but but what should the expectation have been for this year's team? And obviously, perceptions are pretty low nationally. You know, sure. point spread is astronomical. Sure. And then, kind of as a follow up to that, has it been more difficult than than you expected? So I think that would be a, a conversation to have on Sunday, right? Because in, in real time, all I'm focused on is this team right now getting this team to Saturday, getting them ready to play at the highest level they possibly can against a really good opponent. Um, I will have time for reflection. I will have time for those kind of conversations later on. But right now, the entire focus is on getting these seniors, getting them to senior day, making sure everybody in the organization is fully committed to making sure their last experience in Bobby Dodd on Grant Field uh, to play at their highest level uh, to support them. Um, and then afterward, we can reflect on all those things. And I would love to do that. Sure. So the, the things that we do are so uh, different. I'm not saying right or wrong. It's just, it's just different. And so every week has been a learning experience, how to apply it. And then certain guys have a, have a uh, easier learning curve to get it. And you see certain guys playing at a really high level. And it's because of that. And it's the education piece through seeing their peers have success and buying into it even more. Uh, and you see that throughout the season. And uh, I was really proud of this entire football team on a short week uh, being able to accelerate the process to play at a really high level last Thursday night. And uh, without that, you, you really don't have a chance. And, and our guys are giving us a chance uh, by doing it and learning it at a high level. Two more quick ones, Charles and David. So many motivators uh, uh, in this game. Do, do you, um, how does it rank that, that uh, you, this team can knock Georgia out of a playoff? And also, there are so many state rivalry games uh, coming up, like uh, Florida, Florida State, Clemson, South Carolina. Does the ACC, SEC thing come in play for you as a recruiter? So those are all external factors. 
And in this program, we don't worry about an external factor. Everything that we do is completely internal and finding a way to get better every single day and finding a way to play at a high level from day to day and getting ready to go into Saturday. Uh, so the external pieces, uh, even though they are there, um, try to stay as much as we can on the here and now and do what we do and how we do it and try to do it at a very, very high level day to day and week to week. And because uh, the second you start letting external things affect you, then you set yourself up to be up and down and here and there instead of every single day focus on yourself and how you can get better and how you can play at your highest level and perform at your highest level uh, every single day. That's all we're worried about. Coach, uh, Rival Week's always emotional. How do you get these guys to play at an emotional level with respect for the rivalry? But also channel those emotions. Yes, yeah, so same thing that I just that I just said. Uh, we're completely focused on ourselves. Uh, we understand the, the the program that we're going against. Uh, great players, great coaches, um, and a great venue. Uh, but it's all about us and getting ourselves uh, wired and ready to go. And that's week to week. It's every week, and uh, that's what we're completely focused on. Um, is getting ourselves to Saturday with the right mindset, uh, with the right plan, being able to execute the plan um, again, uh, in a physical manner against a really good team.